upgrades. Hey. Oh yeah. Get some skins on this. Yeah. Hey, it's Steve. Welcome back to Clear Direct. This is Fuselage Part 3. But before we get into the fuselage build, uh, we're going to cover some motherhood items. I lopped about three feet off the table, pushed it in that corner, and gives lots more room for activities. So many activities! You like guacamole? The airplane is growing. It's almost on its legs. But let's talk upgrades. First off, check these out. Aerosport products sent me the wingtips. And you can see the difference in shape and how much extra trailing edge span you get out of the uh, these Aerosport product one. The other benefit with these guys is you don't need to cut a hole in your leading edge spar uh, because you can just cut that out and put a uh, landing light right there. Okay, there's also obviously a spot for the tip lights, which I've got the three in one. So strobes, nav, and tail position light. We're trying to put as much carbon fiber in this thing as possible. But I am gonna put in a um, backup battery. And kind of like Mike Patey did in Scrappy, he's just gonna go left to right. So I figure backup battery first, then master battery. You're gonna hit the boost pump, get it started, then turn on the alternator, then turn on the Avionics Master. Pedo heat is gonna be right there. Accessories, landing lights, strobe lights, nav lights, cockpit lights, like a dome light. And then map, this is kind of cool. I'm gonna wire up a manual reversion for the second G3X, which brings me into another announcement. I was gonna wait and do um, a second G3X touch 10 inch screen later, but I just decided to, I don't wanna build the plane more than once. Just go ahead and put in two right off the bat. So what that does is that allows me to fly with, you know, PFD1, MFD1 over here normally, but if I'm doing training with my son or something, or if I wanna fly right seat, I can just flip a switch, boom, and now this is gonna become a, a, another PFD. We're gonna have GFC 507 here. We're gonna have GNX 375 and then G5 right there, okay? Engine, Titan is taking forever. I reached out to Rans and they said that they're moving production back to Mobile. So once that gets up and running, they're hoping that it'll increase production. I know, Ruben, you're you're behind me in line and you're gonna be happy staying there. I'm gonna be watching out for you coming up with a tire iron. Why? <laughs> but I've been thinking that maybe another option is better. I'm not gonna say anything more than that other than I've been looking around and I've been thinking about putting a, a different engine in. All right, eagle eyes um, have noticed there's another piece of carbon fiber, the fairing. So tail cone to vert stab fairing is right there. I've been thinking a lot about paint schemes and I wanna do a little bit of clear coat to accentuate the carbon fiber on those guys. Other things you might notice, got the ELT in there. I've got the GPS and UHF, excuse me, VHF-1. My old F-15 days are coming out. VHF-1 right there. And then I've got the doubler installed, but no antenna quite yet down there for VHF number two. I've also got the ELT mounted in there. Let's get building Here's fuselage part three. We are working on the tail cone. Okay, here's kind of a gotcha. Here is the short, the shortest stringer. I called it stringer B. You've got to drill an extra hole in this stringer. And you can see where I have it marked because it lines up, essentially lines up right there. Something I don't think I showed in the last episode was the bend in these stringers. That was unnerving to do, but clearly you have to match the curve from the aft tail cone to the forward tail cone. And when you bend it, it wants to curve off in one direction. I'm hoping they can help me out. My sling. Where you at, Mojo Grip? Some Murphy. I'm guessing it's a Rebel, based upon the tail. 254 Murphy Rebel. There's the brake. Here's the shear. Oh yeah. Hard part's done. Now for the easy part. It's okay. 
Hey. Did you hear me? Now? Hey. <laughs> the final thing I need to do that I was unable to do in that machine is this right here. When shearing this side, you can see I put a pretty good, <laughs> pretty good little dent in it. So I'm gonna try to fix that now. It's like my high school buddy, Mike Shinoda said, once a paper is crumpled up, it can't be perfect again. But that's pretty good. Better than before. And with paint, never happened. Yo, check it out. Upgrades. So BAS Incorporated, Eatonville, Washington makes a different, um, a Cessna tail dragger style pull handle. It's not listed on their website, but they do have these available at BAS. Not sponsored, so let's check it out. Okay, I've got it located. Okay, got it all marked up. So now that that's all located, I'm going to start match drilling size 40. That long drill bit's gonna come in super handy. Before I rivet, I obviously have to locate the center hole and cut that out. Okay, I've got the center pilot drilled out. I'm gonna step it up. The instructions say to go to only three eighths, but the diameter's an inch, so that's a lot of filing. So I'm gonna go up to about seven eighths and then file the rest. You know, if you were off at all with your center drill, you can finish it off with, um, with filing. You don't need to watch that. I don't know. Con my eldest into helping me. Awesome. Got the cotter pins installed. Working on the doubler for the GA35 Garmin GPS antenna. Number 11 for these four holes, and then for the center, the coaxial, uh, about a 5 8 0.630. Locating the COM1 VHF antenna. Catching the stringer, so put it uh, sandwiched between the stringer and the skin, as well as the spacer strip right there, so it has a little bit extra rigidity. Not too shabby. All right, next for the ELT. Hmm, is this top, bottom? Which way is forward? Aha! Worked out like a champ. Get some skins on this, yep. All right, we are pre-placing the stringers and now it's time to get this ELT doubler installed. And I'm pretty sure you could start a fairly successful YouTube channel doing this. Oh yeah. Okay, for the rivet schedule for the ELT doubler, I'm just gonna continue using AVEX along this stringer and that stringer even though it has a whole bunch of metal underneath it because so here's what it looks like All right it's got the stringer it's got the doubler and then two things of skin um it equates to 0.135 and look at this look how big this range is for that avex rivet 031 to 187 so it's still well within the bounds of the avex rivet if i went with uh, cherry q it'd be of dash 43 um and as I mentioned, the stringers get the AVEX, so I'm just gonna continue with the AVEX. In the middle here, it's just skin and a 40 doubler, so uh, 60 thousandths, which is just under the max for the 41. 41, max of 62. So that's how I figured on the rivet schedule. Thanks to Biker Bill for his help to flip this over. The next step is to get the seat rails 
in and ensure that the bolts are clear for the seat belt attachments. Um, just taking a drill and make sure that the powder coating didn't uh, prevent the, the bolt from going through. And then you can fit up the, the belly skin. So make sure you get that done. Come on. Fifteen dollars. How many did I just waste it? Yes. Seat adjustment rails, racks, whatever they're called, going in. Got a steel bar. Works out perfectly. I'm not going to talk too much to this process because there's a fantastic video by Josh at Project Two Arrow, and we're doing the belly skin and side skins. I guess I should cut you guys up. I haven't been filming a whole lot because it's just kind of redundant, just fitting and match drilling. So some of these are just a little bit bent in. You might need a washer there just to prov provide a nice um, straight mounting solution. Okay. So what I did was I brought some washers and while I was at Home Depot, <laughs> I went to Google and I thought I was typing in Google, hey Google, what's better zinc or stainless steel against aluminum for galvanic corrosion somebody heard me saying that turns out it was an faa der designated engineering rep and we got in this whole conversation he's a mooney pilot i'm a bonanza pilot as well as you know building this plane and so we got into a great conversation he might be watching this video now along with some of the other faa friends that i know that watch all my videos but um, he pulled up the galvanic chart and showed me that zinc was much better than stainless steel and it was cheaper. So regardless, I still am priming it. Oops. Here are all of my eventual spacers, AKA bumper washers, <laughs> eighth inch. Now that the belly skin is in place, I've got the side skins up on the table to deeper and get this one stringer in place or two stringers in place so if you don't know yet i'm doing tail wheel ready <laughs> nice dude Okay, got the side skins on, so it's time to put the belly skins on. All right, the next step is to obviously finish Clico in the top and then work on spacers. And by top, I mean bottom. But I'm gonna leave this episode here. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, you're clear direct. See them if they tell my feet.